And what we have here is 10 cat parrots, all of which died of persistent beak and feather disease, the virus uh, that is attacking the wild population. Beyond the 10 dead parrots that we see here, what makes this scene most disturbing is the fact that this represents over 1% of the global population of Cape parrots. The Cape parrot is the most endangered parrot in Africa, with less than 800 left. They chose, intelligently so, thousands of years ago, to specialize in this superabundant tree, the yellowwood. 99% of their feeding was done on yellowwood fruits. The perfect fat content, the perfect protein content, the perfect carbohydrate content, the perfect parrot food. Just recently we managed to save four very sick cat parrots. After three weeks of eating yellowwood fruits, the virus had disappeared in three of them, and after two months, there was no virus in any of them. Basically from the moment we've discovered these trees, we've had a romance with them, and that romance ended up with us chopping down almost all of the large yellowwoods. Right here we have the industrialization of our forests. These used to be indigenous forests full of parrots and monkeys. Today they're plantations. Much easier to manage, much easier to harvest, and get the wood we need for international markets. These forests used to be filled with elephants. The grasslands between the forests and above them filled with massive herds of buffalo. There were lion and leopard. It's a very wild place. This is not a pristine forest. This is not a forest that can support the indigenous species. We, we, we want to recreate what evolved to be here. We're going to the Okavango now to study the ecology of the mayor's parrot, to find out how to save the Cape Parrot. So we're going to have to go to the mayor's parrot in the Okavango in a wilderness area that hasn't been touched, hasn't been managed, it self-regulates, it's an image of a place from thousands of years ago. A place we haven't impacted on yet. But when you go to a place like the Okavango Delta, you feel it all around you, it consumes you. It's a place that I always say will make you believe in God, or a God. Because that's the image of perfection. That's millions of years of natural selection and evolution. It's perfection. Just two weeks ago, I was in the Okavango Delta at my research site there, looking at the, the mayor's parrot. But when you come to this place, it's not a wilderness area anymore. We've changed it too much, we've asked too much of it, and now we must give back. In the Okavango Delta, the birds are spoiled for choice, with thousands upon thousands of natural cavities. Here in the Amatolas, on the other hand, there aren't any. We chopped all the large hardwoods out over the last 150 years. So it's our responsibility now to supply homes for cavity nesting birds like the Cape Parrot. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing. My absolute low point in the Cape Parrot project was the day, the first day, a sick Cape Parrot was handed into us. We quarantined them, started feeding them on natural food items, most especially the yellowwood and instantly started seeing a reaction, physiologically, emotionally, in those birds. Those four birds are still alive today. They're all getting very excited. We're actually going to do the release now. I'm just going to move them very, very slowly, um, because of constant movements, and open the cage for them. Uh, finding them, uh, they were like, fucked, uh, really, really bad condition. And um, this morning, we actually released them back into the wild. It was uh, an extremely emotional time for myself and the other people involved in rehabilitating them. Um, to see them go back, dead birds flying, uh, was a very, very special thing. 